Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Super Flat series. You've probably guessed it already, but I'm going to be working a little bit more on the dungeon crawling game today. I'm hoping to start and finish an entire section. And I also want to talk you through how the looting system is going to work while the player's in the game. But first, I do want to show you the progression I've made since uploading the last episode. So yeah, let's head on over there. And here it is, breaking through the fog. This thing is huge. Remember, this is just level one as well. I think I used around about 22,000 black concrete blocks. But uh, yeah, let me show you inside. So check it out. Look how cool it looks. And it's pretty big inside as well. This is the exit of the first level. This is where the haunted house is going to be once the player gets their key. I've got plenty of room for kind of a graveyard, a mushroom biome, a couple of houses, all sorts. But I've still got plenty of work to do. Let me show you the bits and bobs that I've changed around here. So this is what I built last episode. I've opened the forest up a bit and I've also added a, a zombie. There he is. Uh, this section hasn't changed at all, but uh, it's still a bit meh at the minute. This cave here. Oh. Thought I had the zombie somewhere. I thought I was being crept up on. So yeah, this is a, a new cave I've built. for. It's got two little purposes. One, it's got a nice little area here for some bits and bobs to go in. And it's also a little cut through to what we're going to be working on today. This is going to be the giant mushroom biome. Oh, and just ignore the rail. That's just to kind of zone the zombie so he doesn't go wandering in the river. Uh, I've got some cool ideas for this little area here, but one of them I want maybe to be a little compass drop so the player can get their key. But yeah, let me show you what else I've done on the other side. So if the player turns left at the entrance, they come down this little windy oak forest path here. I've purposely left it a little bit open for the same again, maybe a little compass drop section here. It then moves into the dark oak section, which has got a nice little camp with some sleeping bags. I'm planning to have a couple of mobs in this section here as well, but I'm not sure if they're going to be smart enough to avoid this campfire, so that may have to change just a little bit. And the path will head down here and head to one of the houses I'm gonna, I've got planned. Oh yeah, and I want to talk about this wall here. It's quite important. Let me just quickly go into free view mode. So this wall here, I haven't actually finished it in this end, but you'll follow it all the way up and round. It goes past the entrance, around the kind of zombie section to here. Um, two reasons why I've done that. First one is to kind of keep the first section nice and easy for the player. And secondly, I don't want the ravagers to kind of be camping the entrance. So as soon as you walk in, there's a couple of ravagers there. Oh yeah, I've got to show you this thing in the middle as well. This is where the player will eventually buy their compass with um, the iron coins they'll be finding. There'll be instructions on the sign, but all they've got to do is find their iron coins and pop 10 in the dropper. And just give it a second just to count through, make sure you paid enough and then you can collect your compass. I've purposely built this machine in the center of the map as well, just so once the player gets their random compass, they've kind of got a rough idea straight away which direction to head in. But let's move on to today's project, which is gonna be a giant mushroom biome, filling up all this space round here. These torches here are just a rough guide on where I kind of want the paths to weave in and out of the mushrooms. This is going to be one of the main areas a player needs to kind of be watching over their shoulder because there's going to be a ravager or two in this section. That means I'm also going to be building some walls to help the player break the line of sight from them and the ravager. Because if I left it just flat like this with paths and mushrooms, I feel like the ravager is just going to be constantly on you. So I want to give the player a chance to be able to kind of outrun and hide from the ravager if need be. If say that's for kind of stopping to eat for a couple of seconds or throwing their compass down in what they think they've found the spot for their key. So I think the best plan of action will be to start from the ground and work my way up. So I'll do the paths, mushroom stems and walls and then we'll do the mushroom caps at the end.
Right, the path and stems are in, and it totally didn't take two hours longer than expected, honest. But I'm happy with it, it's looking pretty good. But saying that, it is a little bit bare down here. I may need to just put one more stem in here. But as you can see, I've got these big empty gaps in between the mushrooms. That's where I'm going to build my walls. I've got mossy cobblestone, bit of moss, and some fence posts for all that. Because as you can see, if you're being chased by a ravager around here, uh, it's very hard to break line of sight. So there's another spot for a wall there, probably another one here as well, just so it gives the player a little bit of time just to catch their breath. I was planning to build a couple of bridges across the river as well, but I kind of like the little parkour hops you have to do. I also need to make this river safe for ravagers to walk on over, so that's an easy job just with some blue glass panes. So I'm going to stop waffling on and get back to building. <laughs> So before I reveal the finished mushroom biome, I just want to briefly talk about the looting system and how it's all going to work. So every chest in the game is going to have a white circuit and an orange circuit. And we're going to use this chest as an example of one being in the game. So in its current state, no one is playing the game, so the chest is empty, which is what we want. Lovely job. And then to fill them up, before a player joins the game, I'm going to hit this loot button three times. The main reason why it's three times is that gives me four different outcomes of the chest. It can either have one item, two items, three items, or actually it has no luck at all and will be empty. And the way we do this is it's hooked up to, I think it's called a randomizer. And at the minute, it's just a 50% chance of it receiving loot. And in here I've got the kind of the percentages of what sort of item it's going to be so this is a, a very low tier chest so it only gives you uh, the iron coins and some dried kelp for food and in a way because the droppers are random this kind of gives it its own percentage so each square here is about 11% so you're looking at roughly sort of 55 to 44% with obviously the decimals adding up to 100% so I'm gonna hit this button three times and we're just gonna keep a close eye on this repeater here one two three and it went off twice so this chest got lucky two times and we'll see what we get we got one of each so it's a bit of kelp and a bit of iron so once the players in the game if they do find this chest and they take the loot out that's perfect that's awesome they've kind of technically reset the, the chest for us already but say for instance they don't find the chest or they die pretty quick and don't get time to get to this chest anything like that where the items stay in and i don't want to just re-hit the loot button for the next person because that's just going to add on top of what's already in there so we need a whole system that empties and clears the chest once the player is done and that's just simple as hitting this button here and that'll unlock this hopper and it gets everything gets sucked out and into this chest here and uh, you redstoners will probably know but i'm guessing there's a system to kind of pull the items back out of this chest back up into this dropper here and that will make it fully automated for me i do have a discord group so if you guys are interested in helping with this project anything from uh, gameplay uh, redstone player testing anything like that I'll leave a link down in the description below um, but I've shown this guys to the redstone lot on the discord page and they've made a few minor tweaks already to improve it so if you do see any kind of things that need changing here it's probably already been told to me on the discord so here I've set it up in a little bit more of a in-game situation so this is the chest in question so currently empty so the game is off and let me before we send the loot through let's just have a look so this has got a three to one and this is a pretty much a tier i call this a tier tier two maybe i've got to look at my sheet again but this is probably a tier two chest so you got uh, about 22 percent chance of emerald 44 percent chance of the gold and around about 33 percent chance for the iron nuggets so here we go we're gonna hit the loot button three times that'll give us the option of having either one, two, three items, or it being empty. 
There we go. So we can't see the repeater this time, so we're not too sure what this has got. So just got the one pulse. And it's got the golden nugget. Which is about right, because this is a uh, three to one anyway. And let's clear it all. That'll reset all the chests for the game. And then we'll check. Yep. Yeah, and we'll give it one more go and see what we get. Uh, no doubt someone's going to tell me in the Discord, but there's probably a better system, a better way of doing this uh, button thing without hitting it three times. So hopefully you got the gist of it there. I didn't want to bore you too much of all the redstone and things like that, but uh, I've got my loot system pretty much sorted. Uh, let me know either on the comments below or in the Discord if I've made any clear and obvious mistakes. But uh, apart from that, I'll uh, get back to the mushroom biome. And here it is, the giant mushroom forest biome in all its glory. I'm super happy how it all turned out. Looks really nice. I've also added these really tall walls. I was just going to have the kind of bog standard Minecraft wall on the outer edge, but I didn't like how the player could see the entire map just like so. So I've blocked it up. It kind of just keeps them a little bit more immersed into the game. Nice little path section around here. I've also put all the glass in the river so the Ravager can just run straight on over with no issues. And you gotta remember there's gonna be at least one Ravager in here, if not two, chasing the player about. So it looks nice and calm as it is now, but trust me, once you've got one of them chasing you, uh, you're not gonna be taking in the details much. Also this section down here, got another massive wall just to kind of hide the rest of the map. Oh yeah, I've got these three little river jumps. I've got the little stepping stone on that one. This one's just a nice big jump. And then we've got one over here as well. I had to kind of lower it down with a couple of slabs. Uh, but it's definitely doable for the player. Nice and easy to begin with. But saying that, once you've got a Ravager chasing you, the pressure might get to you. If you just take a dip into that pool, that Ravager will probably get you. I've also used the bridge that leads you over to the compass trading point as another exit to get out the mushroom forest. Unfortunately, that's all I've got time for today. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you do want to get involved with this project, just follow the link down below to my Discord page or just give me some feedback in the comments. So see you later.